Our newest Grand Hero Battle Unit is Astrum. He's a hero from Arcanea and the Wielder of Mercurius. You may have seen other legendary weapons like Hoth Declare and Parthia in Three Houses, and Mercurius is a forgeable sword you can also obtain by defeating monsters. Now it's time for its debut in Fire Emblem Heroes and Astrum is ready to cut down some enemies. He is another sword infantry unit which may already have some people writing him off, but with a unique weapon in hand and some beastly stats, you may want to give him some attention first. For stats, Astrum has 44 HP, 35 attack, 36 speed, 36 defense, and 21 resistance. If you get out your calculators, that's 172 BST. Oh boy. For those not paying super close attention to stat totals, we have what people like to call generations for base stat totals. There is a clear jump in base stat totals between generations of units, and it's pretty noticeable, especially for infantry units. For example, Ashram's 172 BST is more than the Black Knight's 169 BST, and he is an armored unit. Since Ashram has over 170 BST, he can't even use the Red Dual Infantry A skill, which boosts arena score. Pretty crazy stuff. Now, as far as actual stat points, Astrum has a very solid 35 attack and 36 speed. Not insane, but both very usable. His 44 HP isn't crazy high, but it's nice, especially with 36 defense to go along with it. Astrum will be a great physical damage dueler. His resistance is a bit low, but enough speed to avoid some doubles and a good amount of HP, I think it's not a deal breaker. For the most part, Astrum will have a lot of leeway for build options, and that's only going to increase thanks to his unique weapon. Astrum wields Mercurius, a 16 might sword that also grants a flat plus 3 attack. This means Astrum will end up with 54 attack with Mercurius equipped, which is pretty darn good for a free unit. For its effect, at the start of the turn, if Astrum's HP is greater than or equal to 50%, then grant plus 4 to attack, speed, defense, and resistance to Astrum and sword, lance, axe, bow, dagger, or beast allies within 2 spaces for 1 turn. Astrum gets this bonus even if no other valid allies are within 2 spaces. Alrighty, so this is quite the weapon. Basically, as long as Ashram is above 50% health, he gives himself plus 4 to all stats as a field buff. He also gives the same buffs to all physical damage allies within 2 spaces. So if we have Ashram ready to go at the start of a battle, he will automatically end up with 58 attack, 40 speed, 40 defense, and 25 resistance after receiving Mercurius' buffs. Very impressive stuff, again for a free to play swordsman. Obviously, like other field buff users, Astrum's downfall will be the panic status, and while his 44 HP is decent, it's not going to make him immune to panic ploy users. Mercurius' whole game plan is to stay at high HP anyway, so while Astrum will be an effective brawler, you don't want him taking too much damage. Not only will his own effect in this drop, but he also won't be able to buff up any allies. As a reminder, Mercurius has a 2 space range like tactic buffs, very generous and easy to apply unless you're split up across the map. I would have said Astrum is a new premier buff bot, but not being able to buff up mages, dragons, or healers is a bit of a disappointment. Having a split between physical and magical damage is nice so you don't get walled off by one high defense or high resistance enemy, but all physical damage teams can work and even just a team with one mage. Since Bravely Cena has risen to new popularity because of her new refine, it's worth it to mention that her weapon also only affects physical damage allies. Not only does Astrum and Bravely Cena help each other out, but both of them can support your third and fourth teammates as well. Moving on, Astrum comes with Bonfire for his special, very appropriate choice with his 36 defense. His A skill is the Rare Wind Boost 3. If Astrum starts a fight with 3 or more HP than his opponent, then he'll get plus 6 speed during combat. You can tell that Wind Boost is supposed to work with Mercurius' buff since it also only works when Astrum is healthy. In theory, he's going to be getting an extra plus 10 speed altogether, but the boost skills just are not that reliable. Unless you're Arden or an incredibly invested unit, 44 HP just isn't going to cut it, except against class cannon units. I implore you to give wind boost a try, but if you want something else, I would just replace it with darting blow. As from Astrum's B skill, he introduces another rare-ish skill, this one a bit more potent. Wrath 3 only kicks into effect if Astrum is under 75% HP, and if he procs his special, then he'll get an additional plus 10 damage on top. Also, if Astrum is on low health at the start of the turn, and he has a damage special, then he'll get minus 1 special cooldown that turn. Wrath is an incredibly interesting high risk, high reward skill. While very neat to see on a free reward unit, it doesn't perfectly mesh with Astrum. Mercurius wants him above 50% HP, while Wrath only works under 75% HP. You have that sweet spot between 50% and 75% HP, but getting there reliably is not a guarantee. For those not familiar with Wrath, it's the only skill that can actually proc in battle if Astrum takes damage to drop below 75% HP. This is for the plus 10 true damage on special trigger effect. 
He can start a fight at full health, take a strong attack to drop into Wrath range, and should Bonfire activate, he'll get the extra damage. It makes Wrath into a very strong dueling ability because it acts sort of like an enraged mechanic. It has a focus on special activation, so while Bonfire is great for Astrum, if you can sneak in some cooldown reduction somewhere, then Wrath will shine brighter. Astrum has a very good base kit, start the fight strong with Mercurius' boss and win boost, then have Wrath for some clutch extra damage when things start to get dicey. We'll be talking a lot about builds for Astrum in this video. If you like Astrum but want to use him for Wrath fodder or just don't want to spend heavy investment then maybe a plus one merge is what you want. For that first merge, Astrum normally gets plus one HP and plus one attack. With the neutral nature bonus, he then gets plus one HP, attack, and speed. This means Astrum gets up to 46 HP, 37 attack, and 37 speed. Now that is very impressive for a small amount of investment. We won't be doing a lot of comparing today because Ashram has his own unique weapon, but I do have a few interesting matchups. We have gotten two sort of free sword infantry units recently and both are a bit similar to Ashram stat wise. Some of you may have chosen Brave Alma as your CYL3 pick and then if you picked up three houses then you could have also gotten Mail Battle for free as well. Both of these swordsmen have comparable stats to Ashram with good attack and speed, pretty high defense and then low resistance. However, since they all have their own unique weapons, well, they can each serve a different role. For example, the creator's sword is just bonkers at stomping a lot of annoying abilities these days, and then Alm has Draco Falchion and his Sense Skill Ace Kill that just deals crazy amounts of true damage. One actual free-to-play comparison I did want to make was between Astrum and Rutger. Rutger came out about half a year ago this year and has some impressive stats himself with decent attack and great speed. The major disappointment about him was the lack of a unique sword, and while he can be a very good swordsman, there are a lot of other fast infantry sword users with their own special abilities. I compared Rutger with the other free reward infantry sword units, so if you want to see more, you can watch my video about him specifically. Regarding Astrum, he sits in a very good spot with nice stats and having Mercury plus Wrath which is quite rare itself. He can do a lot of fun things. For builds, Astrum has a lot of options and we'll be talking a lot about different playstyles depending on what you want to focus on. First, let's just discuss some simple base kit alterations. For the most part, Ashram's base kit can work fine, but it can be a bit awkward. Wrath is very strong, but obviously it only works on lowish HP, while Mercurius only applies buffs when Ashram is healthy. You could say Wrath kicks in once Mercurius drops off, and that is true, but some players may not want to shift Ashram's power around. For me, the biggest issue is Wind Boost, but that can be replaced by Darting Blow if you want to keep Ashram's speed up. You could also make do with something like Sturdy Blow. To fill in the C slot and Sacred Seal slots, I would go with either support tools like Drive Speed and Spur Attack and Res, or combat tools to keep Ashram alive like Attack Smoke or a Brazen skill. While Wrath is a lot of fun, if you wish to replace it, then Renewal is a good choice to make sure Mercurius keeps on buffing. Desperation is another tool if you prefer a more straightforward high speed approach. If you want to make use of Wrath's special focus playstyle, then Heavy Blade or Flashing Blade will be vital. They can get Bonfire to proc in one round and help charge up Ignis or Aether faster. If you aren't looking for super high investment, then Ashram can make do with Wrath and just give some tools to survive on low HP like Brazen Tag and Defense or help him recover with skills like Renewal. Next, if you want to make use of Ashram's interesting supportive playstyle, then we have some fun skills. The simplest tools you can make use of are Drives and Spurs, which are both combat buffs, so they will stack with field buffs from Mercurius. Since Mercurius has that 2 range buffing, you may want to go with Drive skills. Instead of Wrath, you can offer a Chill ability since it's a debuff that works from anywhere on the map to weaken a certain type of enemy. Chill Attack or Chill Speed are both pretty annoying and very helpful for your teammates. For some premium support skills, we have Harsh Command Plus, which can neutralize Panic. Obviously not easy to get since it's on one limited unit, but it's an option if you have it. You can also go with Rally Plus skills, which may seem a bit wasteful because they don't stack with Mercurius. However, you need them to activate Faint or Ruse B skills. These are long range debuffs, and since Mercurius requires Ashram to stay healthy, ideally you want him supporting from the back lines. Probably not worth it, but it's an option to consider. If you want to play with infantry teams, then you have fun tools like infantry pulse or the heavy and flashing blade equivalents. Just remember that Mercurius doesn't work on magic damage users, so Astrum won't be a perfect all around buffer. Now let's talk about wrath focus builds because it's a neat skill and it's likely a good amount of players never got to play with it. One goal of wrath is to get a lot of special procs. That means instead of Mercurius, you may want a sling edge or a wool dow to double down on the true damage burst. I use this setup on the left with my Nephany and it's a build that is only meant 
meant for one or two engagements. Fury just adds a bunch of useful stats, and then we have Wrath ready to go by having Flashing Blade plus a slaying weapon. You can choose Ignis or Bonfire depending on if you want the special to activate on the first round or the next round to hopefully score a one shot KO. To survive until then, Attack Smoke is vital because it debuffs nearby enemies with a minus 7 attack debuff in case Ashram has to fight back to back. If you don't like Fury, then Swiss Sparrow, Death Blow, or Darting Blow are nice choices. A solo skill is also very strong if you have it. Instead of Attack Smoke, you can copy Sothis with Time's Pulse, which does stack with Wrath's minus 1 special cooldown. In a perfect scenario, you could have a bonfire get recharged every player phase if you use a Slaying Edge. You can actually stick with Mercurius because its plus for boss with Fury on top would make Astrum very scary in his first engagement. Not only does he have tons of stats, but then you got Wrath to worry about, and you could use Moonbow instead for faster specials without having to use Flashing or Heavy Blade. Ashram can be a pretty deadly unit, so you have to be a bit careful if you have to face him when he is fully buffed and it has a special that can activate in one round. You really don't want to let him proc his special when he's angry. Last, let's discuss some other fun skill options because Ashram is very flexible in his builds and that's great for a reward unit, especially if you're looking to merge him up. When you want a unit to take less damage, there's really not many better options than the Impact A skills. Ashram would love Sturdy Impact or Mirror Impact and honestly, if there's a speed version later on, that would be great too. Combined with attack smoke and something like close defense, and he can player phase and be ready for the enemy phase as well. If we are feeling more defensive, then there's nothing wrong with steady breath. Ashram has great base defense and would love the special corner reduction. Another interesting option is bonus doubler. It makes sense that a guy who can buff himself would like to double those buffs. The only downside is that Ashram only gives plus four buffs, while most bonus doubler candidates want that sweet plus six. I would say just run Fury instead if you don't have the fodder. Now for B skills, I have two rows listed this time. Renewal is fine, but there is also Mystic Boost for continuous fighting. A Breaker skill would help Ashram stay healthy and help him counter specific threats better. You also have the Tried and True Quick Repost or Guard if you're afraid of special procs. Again, I would say try and keep Wrath since it's such a rare skill, but Ashram doesn't have to run it if you want a different type of playstyle. This guy really does have a lot of versatility. So should you promote Ashram to 5 stars? Well, he's a very good physical damage brawler. 35 attack and 36 speed is great for a free unit, especially to compete with many other sword infantry units out there. With his 36 defense, Ashram could take some hits as well, and while his res is a bit low, he has a good amount of HP to take at least 1 or 2 magic damage blows. As for his skills, Ashram comes with some very fun abilities to build around. Mercurius is an awesome weapon, granting simple plus 4 buffs to Ashram and physical damage allies. Wind boost can work if you invest in Ashram to boost his HP, but can be changed out rather easily. As for Wrath, it's a very rare skill and very powerful ability. Ashram is a good unit, but will surely be sacrificed a lot because of Wrath Fodder. Overall, I think Ashram is a great free to play option if you want a sword infantry unit. Many veterans have tons of sword infantry to choose from, but with Mercurius and Wrath in his kit, Ashram already stands out, especially among other reward units. He is pretty versatile, and you can build for support around Mercurius or go more aggressive building around Wrath. You can even do both, and there's just a ton of fun skills Ashram can make use of. For me, if Mercurius buffed all weapon types, then I would say he is a must-have unit, but with that physical damage restriction, he won't be as crazy of a buffer. He is good, but if he could have buffed mages and dragons, then that would have been something else. For those looking to invest in Ashram with merges, I think he'll be very good as a merge project. The extra HP is nice to have, and since Ashram buffs himself, having even more stats on hand is just fantastic. If you enjoy buffing allies, then I would keep at least one 5 star copy on hand just to have to mess around with. Let me know your thoughts on Ashram in the comments, I will probably 5 star a copy for myself because I think he would be a great compliment for Brave Lucina, and I enjoy simple buffing units. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.